Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship today. If you would please take a moment, sign in. You can also do that online and include everybody that's watching service today with you. Remember, we're keeping track of that, so we appreciate you signing in. Well, let's get going with our opening song. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in who I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. As we turn to our time of confession and forgiveness, and as we're going to be reminded in our gospel lesson today that Jesus handling Satan's temptations went pretty well. And what does he use? He uses God's word. Oftentimes when we are tempted, we fail. And perhaps at this time we take a moment and just reflect exactly on that. Just God promises that he will give us that way out. Maybe we're struggling with that following that way out. So let's pause a moment to reflect if there's anything that's heavy on our hearts. Let us put that at the foot of the cross. Hear those words of forgiveness and seek that extra measure of the Holy Spirit to keep us on the right path. We pause a moment for reflection. Together we confess, Heavenly Father, we admit our failures to turn to you in our times of temptation. Often we let the sinful desires of more consume our lives instead of being content with what you have provided. Seldom do we seek your way of escape to sin and follow our own path which leads to darkness. Forgive our many sins against you. For the sake of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, put us back on the path of light so that others may see our good works and glorify you. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has sent his Son Jesus to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I've got a heart that's full of faith-filled helplessness. There are mountains ahead that I can't move by myself. But I know when I'm weak, He's strong. When I can barely breathe, there's still a song. Even though it's hard right now, I'm not here on my own. So when it seems it can't be done, I know God is big enough. I can run the race I'm called to run, cause I know God is big enough. He'll finish everything he starts, he'll meet us right here where we are, and I can feel faith Cause I know God is big enough There are days that the shadows of doubt make me feel small I'll declare that I don't stand in my strength at all Cause I won't live a day you didn't plan Every single moment is in your hands even if the whole world shakes, you're the rock on which I stand. So when it seems it can't be done, I know God is big enough. I can run the race I'm called to run, 
Cause I know God is big enough He'll finish everything He starts He'll meet us right here where we are And I can feel faith rising up Cause I know God is big enough Bigger than the fear that surrounds me Bigger than the chains that have bound me Bigger than the story my past could tell Bigger than the weight of tomorrow Bigger than the hurt and the sorrow Bigger than the lies I've told myself So when it seems it can't be done I know God is big enough I can run the race I'm called to run Cause I know God is big enough He'll finish everything He starts He'll meet us right here where we are And I can feel faith rising up So when it seems it can't be done I know God is big enough I can run the race I'm called to run Cause I know God is big enough He'll finish everything He starts He'll meet us right here where we are And I can feel faith rising up Cause I know God is big enough I know God is big enough The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Deuteronomy chapter 26. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take from the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given you and your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. 
And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give you all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an appropriate time. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi, boys and girls. It's Deaconess Kim with the children's message. Do any of you wear glasses? Or do you know anyone who does? I wear glasses, you know. Most days I wear contact lenses, but without my glasses or my contacts, I can't see very well. Everything is blurry. But there are some people who can't see at all. They're blind. Can you imagine what it would be like if you couldn't see anything? Now, in the Bible, Jesus once met a man who was blind. Jesus showed his power and healed the man who was blind. The man who was blind could now see. Now he could see brown buildings and green trees and the blue sky and baskets filled with colorful things. But most importantly, he could see Jesus. And he could see that Jesus was someone very special. Not everyone sees Jesus that way, though. Later in that story, the Bible tells us about some other people. They could see just fine with their eyes, but Jesus said that they were still blind. Do you know what Jesus meant? He meant that they had blind hearts. They didn't believe in Jesus. They couldn't see that he was special. They couldn't see that Jesus was God. Now, most of us do not have blind eyes, and some of us don't even need to wear glasses. But just like in Bible times, there are people in our lives today who can't see with their hearts. It's like their hearts are blind. They can't see Jesus either. They don't think that Jesus is God. Isn't that sad? Now, just like Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man, Jesus also opens the eyes of our hearts. God sends the Holy Spirit to us, and the Holy Spirit opens the eyes of our hearts. Then we can see Jesus, and we can see that Jesus is someone special. We know that Jesus is God. We know that Jesus is our Savior. We can see that He died on the cross and rose again to forgive our sins. Isn't that good news? So here's what you can do this week. I want you to think about people who have blind hearts. Do you know someone who can't see Jesus? someone who doesn't believe in Jesus? Say a prayer and ask Jesus to open the eyes of their heart so they can see Jesus too. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for opening my heart eyes so I can see you. Help others see you too. Amen.
to you online viewers chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So today I think we're looking at a fairly familiar scripture section, uh, Luke chapter 4, with Jesus interacting with Satan in the temptation showdown. But one thing I wanted to kind of touch on before we got going too deeply into this passage is the importance for us to be in God's Word. Because I think, after all, that's what things are all about. And we're sort of leading that up to that with our two hymns already that we've sung today. So we're getting diving deeper into this time of Lent, right? And oftentimes during Lent, people give something up like chocolate or candy. And not to dismiss anything like that, but often things, times I would like to encourage people is to pick something up, you know, dig into God's Word. And through this sermon series that we've been working through on our midweek, The Witnesses to Christ, uh, we've been doing a midweek devotion. So perhaps that's something that you can add to also. So it premieres 7 o'clock every morning on Facebook. You can also pick up a devotion here at church, or you can go to our YouTube channel, and we have all of those saved each and every day. But the importance is it's being in God's Word, and we've done something fun this year. We've actually had members of the church that are reading that devotion too. So if everything goes to plan, we'll have 46, including myself, reading a devotion for you as we walk through our Lenten journey. So Jesus, 40 days of Lent, right? 40 days into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And so here we go when we recap this story. Satan tempts Jesus to turn these stones into bread. How does Jesus respond? Man shall not live by bread alone. And perhaps we remember from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, he says and adds on to that, but by every word of God. Well, then Satan turns it and says, shows Jesus all the words or the worlds in a moment of time. And Satan says, I'll give you all of these if you simply bow down and worship me. And Jesus counters, again, using God's word, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Here comes the kicker, right? Number three, Satan takes Jesus up onto the temple and he tempts Jesus to jump off the top of the temple, knowing and quoting scripture by saying that he will catch him, the angels will catch him before he hits the ground. And Jesus closes with this last statement for his temptations. It is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now again, you've probably heard this epic battle between Jesus and Satan before. Have you ever had any thoughts, though, on this big showdown? I think on church on Sunday, I'm going to certainly ask people the same thing with the live audience and putting it to you to contemplate these kinds of things, too. Because maybe you've had questions about this passage, too. Like, for example, could Jesus really fall into temptation? I mean, was it even really a possibility? I mean, think about that. Maybe you've been challenged by that before. Or how about this? Do the temptations even make sense? I mean, do they make sense for Jesus? Is this something that would allure him in some way? Or maybe were they supposed to be more towards us? Maybe not. I guess I've never fasted for 40 days. I would not no, I probably would want something to eat for sure in that regard. But any other questions that come to mind? Maybe the account of the temptations, if we're thinking about it that way, are not really meant as intellectual questions for us to ponder. Maybe even perhaps they are meant to be formational to us. That is an example for you and for me to follow. Sort of like our stewardship program, right? When we went into our stewardship program, it wasn't about intellectually thinking about the things, our time, talents, telling, and treasure, but rather it was engaging us, engaging us to action, because it's when we put ourselves into action, that's what it means to follow Jesus. That's what 
stewardship is all about. That's what discipleship is about. So if we're called to follow Jesus, following Jesus is about maybe not pondering things anew, but rather if we're following Jesus, it means you know picking up our crosses and following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, it's not just head knowledge. It also involves our hearts, our whole being, our commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how does Jesus respond to Satan? He sends Satan off with God's word. This is exactly what Adam and Eve failed to do in the garden. When Satan said to the woman, Did God actually say to you, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? They should have simply said, yes, God said we should not eat of the garden and send Satan away. We want to be like Jesus, not like Adam and Eve. If we are to be successful in battling Satan's temptations on us, we need to remember two things, right? First of all, Jesus. Second of all, God's word. When Jesus taught his followers to pray, remember when he teaches them the Lord's Prayer, he has this right in the Lord's Prayer, and lead us not into temptation. These are familiar words for us. We pray this every Sunday in church. Maybe you even pray this at home or before you go to sleep. But I suppose it could actually raise another question, right? Does God lead us into temptation? Well, we know from James 1, right, that certainly this is not true. James says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. And see, James goes on to say, Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So are we doomed? As Lutherans, we know we are at the same time saint and sinner. So we understand this struggle all too well. And all too often, it seems, like the sinner side always wins out. But that doesn't mean we've lost right? Because we know the victory is ours. Heaven is not based upon how many times we make the right choice or the wrong choice. No, heaven is ours because of what Jesus has done for you and for me. He died on the cross for our sins. And in fact, on that cross, when he says it is finished, that includes every temptation we've ever received, will receive, are currently receiving, it's all finished because our victory is in Jesus alone. See, that's why I say we don't want to go into this without Jesus. We never want to go into this without Jesus because we know that we need Jesus and we have Jesus. St. Paul reminds us of this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Here's the reason Jesus was tempted. Because he is one of us. Hebrews 4 reminds us that Jesus was tempted in every way we have been tempted. Or that we will be tempted. Or that we maybe are currently being tempted in. It doesn't matter, right? It's all covered. We're not unique. Jesus has faced everything that we would face. This is what God's word says to you and me. So it's not like we're walking down a different path. Jesus knows what we are experiencing. So we follow Jesus' path. That is, turning to scriptures. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The escape. So what is that way of escape? 
I'll let you ponder that for maybe just a few seconds here, and I'll do the same on Sunday morning with everybody gathered here. What does this really mean? Is it like this, the, the Monty Hall, let's make a deal, and you've got several doors to go down? Is that the escape? Is that how this is going to shake itself out? God doesn't mean like it's the way of escape is choosing between one door or the other door. That would be crazy. It's not like God is up there putting up multiple paths for us to follow and hoping that we would pick the right one on any given day, especially when Satan comes to play with us, but rather we go back to God's Word. We remember what our options truly are. So like Adam and Eve, they picked the me door. Wrong answer. What they needed to pick was the Jesus and the Bible door, right? God's Word. Staying completely and trusting in God alone, not themselves. You see, God is the one that provides the way out. God is the one that has the escape. And the escape is only found in God's Word. We do pray in the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil. Literally, it's deliver us from Satan. Because we know the devil's assaults will never, ever stop. They're going to keep on coming at us. But we also know that one little word fells Satan. And that word is Jesus. Jesus alone. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue His kingdom work among us. For this week's announcements, our Silver Saints will be gathering next Thursday, March 17th at 12 noon. They will enjoy a wee bit of Irish fare and a few shenanigans. They will be charmed if you would join them and bring a friend along. Everyone 55 and older are welcome to come. For the Team Jesus men of all ages, we are going to a KC Mavericks hockey game on Tuesday, March 15th at 7.05 p.m. The tickets are $20 to reserve your seat. You can sign up at the Connection Center or email the church office. The reservation deadline is this coming Wednesday, March 9th. Finally, this month we are partnering with our Small Saints Preschool to collect food items for the Liberty Public Schools Back Snack Program that we support at Kellybrook Elementary. Please see the Team Jesus News for the list of food items that we need. Donations will be accepted until March 31st. Also, our stewardship luncheon celebration. We want to celebrate our members and their dedication to the stewardship of this church. We will be hosting a catered luncheon on Sunday, March 27th. You can RSVP by clicking on the link in our Team Jesus News or email the church office. Deadline for RSVPing is Sunday, March 20th. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This morning in our prayers, just want to continue to pray for Rochelle Wicklin and her recovery. She is home now, so that's good news. Also prayers for Alta Mae Morris uh, as she continues to uh, struggle with health issues uh, and complications from her hip surgery. Prayers for Barb Ewart and her battle with cancer. Prayers for Hardy Larson's mother that she finds a place to live. Prayers for Rick Miller, who was in a skiing accident, uh, had a broken back, but it looks like it will not require surgery. So thank prayers of thanksgiving for that, but prayers for a quick healing. Prayers for Pauline. This is Nate Lewis's mother with stage four cancer. Prayers for Lance. This is a husband of a co-worker of Terry's that's having some breathing and heart issues. Of course, we want to continue to pray for all those involved in the Ukraine invasion war with Russia. Prayers also for the pastor Keith Kluckow family. Uh, he was a former pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church uh, where Nick and Diana Smith were members. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, guide the leaders of this world and especially our nation during these tumultuous times. Grant wisdom and discernment for all of our leaders making decisions that could impact our world, especially for the proclamation of the gospel. Lord, we pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and protect your church and people in that place so that your peace and righteousness prevails in Ukraine. Watch over those who serve in our armed forces, our law enforcement, and all of our first responders. Send your angels to guard and care for them and bring them home safely to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, bless your church throughout the world and especially our congregation. Continue to grow us as your people and help us to be faithful to the Great Commission. Help us to be faithful and diligent in praying for our names on our top 10 list, to be ready to give witness to the hope that we have in Jesus and our willingness to disciple others so that your kingdom will grow among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering, especially for Rochelle, Alta May, Barb, Heidi's mother, Rick, Pauline, Lance, if it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially Pastor Kluckow's family. Comfort them that they may find hope in the resurrection of your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you call us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Cooper, Tate, Faith, Janelle, Brad, Shane, Gus, Veronica, and John, as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and a promise to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Scott and Kathy and Jim and Kelly as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Oh
Dissolve like snow, the sun. 